episode of Lifestyle Optify. I am your host, Ali Mohammed, along with Lloyd Shu, and of course, we got Rich B, Rich Normus, with us. And today, we welcome another episode of Exploring Futurism Unveilings Tomorrow World. And we're going to be discussing today Industry 4.0 and its current state and the future implications it has on business and society. I'm really excited about this, and this is a real important episode, especially for those that's in the job world and trying to see what the future of tomorrow is going to be. I know if you're watching the news, there's a lot of talk, a lot of speculation about AI and where we're going in the future. Is it going to take jobs? Is it going to create jobs? And what are you going to do in the middle of all of this going in? So we got the expert of futurism with us, Rich. What's going on, fam? Hey, 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 hey. Good to see you guys again. Always, always. So Industry 4.0 represents the next phase of industrialization, combining technology and innovation in unprecedented ways. So um, I say it real educational, but I'm sure that you could break this down for people way better and give them a better understanding. So sure, sure, sure. sure. I guess a couple of ways. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I would say industry four like represents the like it's obviously the fourth major revolution, um, you know, in industrialization. And it's characterized by the fusion of, of physical, digital and biological technologies. It's the involving the use of smart connected systems like artificial intelligence, you know, the uh, Internet of Things, cloud computing, advanced robotics to create a more efficient, responsive and personalized experience in the manufacturing service and in daily life. How was that? I, I like that it, I like that. it. Feels clear, <laughs> I understood. Yep, I, I, <laughs> now, can you contrast that compared to the industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and just kind of give a, a brief, that way we, the listeners understand how we got to 4.0? Right. Okay, yeah, I'll, you know, kind of be, you know, there's kind of quick things, right? So, like, let's just kind of, le like, leave the, like, an example of, like, in transportation, right? Uh, transportation mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, manufacturing, right? So, you know, uh, before Industry 1, you know, we were using horses, right? Put a whole bunch of heavy, heavy shit on a horse and tell it to go from, you know, point A to point B, right? When Industry 1, one came in, we... Um, it started to implement the aspects of steam and steam engines, right? So now we had trains mm -hmm. that were kind of basically running on water, right? So now if it took mm -hmm. whatever it was, how many horses, you know, it now is like eight, 10 times the amount of product that you can kind of move and in kind of in an easy and more kind of efficient manner. So look, you know, so if you want to think about like kind of steam, steam engines and like you know and all their different kind of you know uh, building opportunities that they were you know, going on with there uh with mm -hmm. um industry two is uh when we started to implement electricity into these systems okay and that's where you started kind of getting things like the um um you know the uh product of like uh you know uh what the hell is that called like the the uh, the line of when where now people are putting things together. Uh, what you call that? The, assembly line. Uh, well, assembly line. Thank you very much. Um, so, like the assembly line started to come into business because now you were able to kind of like with electricity move, you know, boxes, this kind of like kind of whatever, get it to a human to kind of do what they need to do to kind of put it down, and then they'll get it down the line, assembly line kind of stuff, right? But with the use mm -hmm. of electricity, it changed, you know. Uh, again, the efficiencies, the cost, you know, it was a lot cheaper to use electric than it would, you know, would be a kind of old kind of steam, you know, you know, engine. And they brought like a lot of opportunities from places like with electricity that, you know, again, didn't have before. Like if you even think about like, so um, the light bulb was actually really good, you know, kind of an example of that. Like when you started adding electricity, right? You... Uh -huh. Like, so let's just say you had a factory that used to had used to have to wait, you know, sun, sunrise, sunset, right? That's, that's kind of, that's all the light that they had. But now we have the, you know, the electric light bulb, you can run 24 hours, right? And, um, you know, so that added so much more 
to the development and the ability to, to get, again, additional product, more product and stuff like that. Now, you know, again, it's not just about like, you know, kind of serving the man on that. The light bulb changed so much when it even came to education. You had no night school before, right? There was, you know, you, you know, you had no candlelight shit going on, stuff like that. But now you had like a full end up, you know, where you can kind of go to work and day and go to night and go to school at night. So there's like, you know, so when you think about how electricity kind of added all those, you know, kind of aspects to a much broader, larger opportunity. Uh, industry three is like kind of when they started adding computers to that stuff. Right. So it didn't, you know, it started, you know, kind of just making it easy. Again, computers knew how many to bring, what to, you know, kind of what to do. And, you know, again, added a lot of, you know, again, I can't just thousands of examples and how computers changed. You know, this is like 1970s. We're like in that world now where, you know, it's kind of helped again with the efficiencies, you know, and kind of learning. Like we started to start using the aspects of data in industry three. Right. So now computers can start counting all that stuff and knowing where it was all going or well, not knowing where it was going, but knew like, again, how many, where this and that and where it was kind of at least supposed to be. Going. So industry four is, again, the kind of accumulation of all that, you know, no more, no more of that. But now it incorporates, you know, kind of an, in a revolutionary way, the fusion, again, of the physical aspects of it, all the digital, digital kind of capabilities of it. And then all the now the virtual world's part of it. Right. So, um, you know, so now we're getting just a whole bunch of smart program, you know, smart products, a lot of smart procedures, right? Smart factories and, you know, and all that all kind of now working together, teaching each other, you know, helping each other, all that to, just, again, to make where we, you know, again, the directions and, you know, where, you know, where we're going, what it's making easier. And again, this is something I don't think was ever, you know, really not taken in the other three industry, you know, industries is on how it affects you the person there's a personage mm -hmm. to the industry now and again you know how i work me technology me that it, to my human right we're working together it's like a partnership kind of thing and and it's important that the human has that you know has that you know that feedback because it there's unknownness to where you know where um all this information like all the open data sources you know all that and then again it, it needs us you know, and we need, and we need it. I guess that make a lot of sense with you know the industry 4.0 4 and you know like you said, I didn't think about it like that, and I think a lot of people don't think about how we work today. It, it's you know you you are correct with smart factories using the Internet of Things, AI, robotics, data analytics, which is all a part of today's workforce. Yeah, and, and um, you you go go ahead. No, no, I, you know, um, I'm always surprised on you really how much the component of data, data science connects into industry four. I mean, I knew, you know, there's obviously all of that kind of going on, but, uh, as, as I hear people using it as a, you know, watching industries kind of affect that, like it, it is the data component that's really kind of making it very sexy and very, you know, again, obviously very smart and, you know, and, um, and uh, you know, think and you know the the good leaping point for all the other places. You know, I, I mean, again, there's a certain amount of you know no shit part to that, but you know, I don't think a lot of people really realize on kind of how much the data is being kind of included and real time data, right? So in industry three, you got a disk, you know, but for of information, you kind of put it into your computer and then you know you you know you did it. Now you know it's it's waiting for you know real time information that's coming in from thousands of different sectors to affect each you know each box each delivery each person you know in, in, in that way and also you know again uh, having a, you know a way to work with the human you know rich i, I don't think when i was growing up they, they used to hire statisticians and statistics used to be a thing i'm not even sure statistics is a thing now i think data science has taken over a lot because a lot of statisticians well, i would say is, is, is data scientists now Right. So I'm saying they're, they're really, you know, they really are the same thing. So I wouldn't say statistics, you know, and statistic sciences have gone away. They just kind of turned into an art or into a science. Right. You know, before, you know, when we were trying to figure out, you know, uh, the actual human body temperature, which, by the way, is not 98.6. 
if you take it that's what we all used to do right but when we took like mm -hmm. billions and billions of different like uh of uh, temperatures you know over the years we have you know kind of realized it's actually 98.4 it's like a little kind you know we got down that you know that little more right so i know it's a small example you know of it but it's still a statistical way of you know but just now it's doing it with vast vast amounts of information right and a, and a human with a calculator or well, all that kind of shit couldn't do it before, right? They said, I can only take this much amount of information and process it. With Industry 4 and the technologies supporting Industry 4, you know, it could do vast, vast amounts of information in three seconds, where it took you, you know, weeks or months or, you know, kind of processing time or all that. And those seconds are now counting. You know it counts right because now if i have three seconds above everybody else i can kind of do this i can kind of do that so yes there's it's statistics but definitely into a, a into a science a deeper science wow it's kind of crazy to think about actually with industry 4.0 i'm feeling like uh now it's a, it, like you said before is a way to collaborate with the human so it's it's no longer just oh i get up i go to work pay a bill that's life. Now we're looking at a, a era basically where a human can tap into potential. Well, what I would consider like wasted potential and a person that could do something like this, like, you know, because I always used to say like people in different time periods in our history were doing solving algorithms with like an advocate or something. And now like all every right. human can have that potential. Mm -hmm through working alongside industry 4.0. Is that something that you kind of see like happening? Oh, no, it, 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 it's mind blowing. It's all of this information not only is at your fingertips, right? But, you know, accessible to different like processing sources that which is basically like the cloud, if you guys know cloud and, you know, and edge yes. technology is, right? So you can have all this information and, you know, you no longer need a mainframe to process all this stuff. All you got to do is upload it to the cloud. It's going to go do it and give it back to you. You know, it's like, you know, so just think about that, you know, kind of change and, you know, uh, you know, of, of those areas. But also, like, again, the human component, because the human is, let's just say, voting like kind of in, in right. their way with, you know, with their system. And I, I you know. Um, uh, you know, uh, I think a really great example on how this probably touches every one of your, you know, listeners and, you know, or in, in versions of it is the Atlanta Martyr system, right? Something that everybody takes, you know, every day, I guess, whoever is going, you know, whoever is using it, not working from home right. and stuff. And that's a whole nother conversation, right? Yeah. yeah. But a martyr has been <laughs> implementing, you know, Industry 4.0 for some time, you know, and, you know, and what it does is just to improve, you know, public transportation, right? So now they implemented a mobile app that provides real time scheduling of buses and trains, digital ticketing that you can you know go like, kind of right there. So there's like already there's those five or six kind of different components, plus a personalized trip planner. Right. And then so Modder uses, you know, IOT to monitor all their vehicles. They now know where all the trains and the buses are and it has used, you know, AI to process over like, again, months, years and stuff like that. The actual flow of traffic that goes from, you know, one from one part of the city to the other. And so, you know, you can kind of direct all this stuff. So there's like a saving of time, a saving of money. Right. It takes again, it, uh, it starts to now predict what's going to be happening right based on the you know again these billions of trip you know trip uh you know trips that you and i are taking again it's feeding us you know we're feeding it information for it to work better for us right so it's not like again it's a good partnership um and then uh you know it's also used to inform users like you know no one knew like there were days that no one knew anything it was kind of like my bus coming my train coming at all is it going to be doing this you know and now i know it's not coming you know, I can kind of do other things. I'm not going to be wasting our, you know, around and making my commute, you know, uh, how bad it, just the fact that I'm commuting alone, but at least you know, it's more in a kind of an efficient and a much more user friendly, you know, manner for, you know, Atlantean residents. That's a very key thing, because, you know, even in the trucking industry now, they, they are using the AI technology and everything to monitor the truck, make sure that they're taking their breaks 
And I, I thought it was amazing, even when you're down to like Uber and DoorDash, how you can turn on an app and, an, and it's amazing to me that the app can predict if you if you come to a hard break yeah. or, or, or not. You know, it's like, oh, you, you know, you're, you're breaking too hard. Now, I've seen the down, well, I've heard of the downside of the industry 4.0 when you look when it comes to car insurance, because a lot of these with these apps now, things that the insurance companies did not know like when you're driving fast and swerving in and out i don't tell through technology but what do you what do you have to say i guess it could be a good thing if you one of those people that go directly to the speed limit and you 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 stop then i guess you could get a lower rate but if you one of these people like i said although you may have never got out with a speeding ticket or had a wreck they can see your <laughs> driving patterns and they want to charge yeah. you over it. I, I, I'm kind of curious as that's the reason why my insurance went up. <laughs> well, right. You know, I, you know, um, there are, you know, challenges, of course, and kind of considerations to keep in mind, you know, with all of these, you know, 4.0 and any of the kind of technologies or things that we're going to work. You know, the first, you know, real deep consideration is the displacement of jobs due to automation, right? That applied in industry one, two, and three as well right mm -hmm. this guy lost his job because this, this machine counts you know uh you know uh, pieces of wood faster than i could ever do and now i'm gone right and so yeah there's there is a lot of hurt you know to that part of it and it's only going to get deeper with these kind of efficiencies right I, i'll put that i'm going to put that there but then i you know what i see as a futurist and again a multidisciplinarian futurist is that mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, it's going to help the man, you know, know where I am, what I'm doing, you know, where I'm kind of taking my break. So, you know, whatever like that. And, you know, but, you know, they save money by, you know, kind of being within some kind of, you know, standard system. Right. It's a job. Right. It's not your uncle. Mm -hmm. You know, like you're, you're kind of working for someone. Right. But the other, you know, kind of the other part of that is and you're seeing it not only again, truck drivers but you know if you want to think about it, like i think you know the major you know uh, white collar you know person is that everybody had these dick jobs that you know kind of you know were inherited you know from you know some kind of legacy system that this company need to have at least 20 people in this group and because that's how they did it before and this and that and you sat around on the computer all day and you kind of ordered shit and you did your five minutes of work that you, you know that they're paying you eight hours for Right. So th those are the things that, you know, again, again, those are the jobs that we're losing. You know, we're kind of like kind of, you know, and, and so, you know, where we always, you know, I loved sitting around, you know, taking a three hour break, you know, like, you know, and then coming back and still getting my job done and, you know, kind of, you know, so it's, it's that kind of thing. Like, you know, it, and, it, and it's kind of hard to find, like, again, uh, in some ways that you, you're useless. Right? Like, again, you're not bringing any value to your company, you know, like you're, you know, again, it's, this is not, you know, your dad doesn't own this, some, you know, some, someone else does, who's, who's paying you money, who's guaranteeing you money, if you kind of do stuff, right? So exactly. th there is that kind of, again, double-edged sword. So you are going to lose, you know, you may lose your job, again, to do this kind of, you know, animation, but what was it? You know, like uh, in uh, in industry three, it used to be like, oh, uh, or, you know, in some forms, like the computer or uh, or these immigrants are coming in and taking my job and doing all this kind of stuff. And the answer was, what kind of job do you have that someone who just got yeah. sneak snuck through the, the, you know, the border and, and took it away from you? <laughs> Don't even speak English. You know, wow, uh, man, you know, you know kind of <laughs> <laughs> you 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 just hit a good point. I was just gonna say that. I never I, I never really thought about it, and, and that really needs to be said to Americans. Really, you, I, I, I'm gonna use that. If a, if an immigrant Please. come in and take your job, yeah, you don't have a very yeah. skillful job. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. What the hell are you doing? Yeah, what are so you what, doing? What, exactly. you know, right. And again, there's a lot of these legacy jobs, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, in, in, in a lot of different forms. And that's only one of them. None of them is like, hey, my manager, you know, the manager assistant management says I need to have five people to do my job because I get this. I get that when I have five people, you know, whatever. But if it really only takes a half of a person, you know, and now, you know, technologies and efficiencies are kind of going you know, to be showing that. 
you know, and that's the other part, uh, you know, that kind of goes in here. It's like, you know, the, the stress, I would say, on middle managers. I, I was a middle manager at one point, And, you know, again, I, I was a whole bunch of middle managers that I don't like. But what exactly do you do, middle manager, other than babysit five people who we don't need anymore? Exactly. Don't be crying to me now, right? You know, it's all that right. kind of stuff. So there's, you know, so there's like, so again, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm all for jerking around and all that kind of stuff. But, you know. It's not it's not your mother and father's company you know this is kind of somebody else and again i always respect the fact that you know you signed a contract saying you're going to do a job and i'm at the end of the day you know your pay is going to be waiting for you not uh, maybe three days or kind of all that kind of stuff right that's my commitment you know you commit to do this mm -hmm. and i'm going to commit that you got you know a check waiting for you or a direct deposit that's going right into your bank right so there is an aspect of study of work, you know, when it comes to, you know, to these things, and they're going to continue to change, you know, um, leading into that is the whole privacy concern, you know, about, again, now I know, you, you know, the truck driver knows, you know, that the company knows where he is, you know, he can't be pulling in the back of, you know, of, you know, of Walmart and taking a nap, you know, and all that kind of, you know, or, or now I know, like, the system knows what I buy, how much I buy it right uh you know easy pass easy pass knows where i'm going <laughs> it knows when i leave when i come home it knows where you know uh you know mm -hmm. i personally think there's you know hey if i'm not doing anything wrong you can kind of track me all you want right uh, you know you know that that just kind of helps the kind of bigger thing but just you know there are there is an aspect again of privacy that we're all going to have to you know reevaluate you know or you know on that you know when it comes to what you know what i know what what's kind of going on mm -hmm. But there's also like the increase of data sharing, right? So, you know, uh, and then storage, where do I put all this, you know, is it being tapped into other things? Like, like, so there's those parts, yeah, data storage. That's why you have like, uh, you know, clean boxes is kind of what they call it. It's like, you know, everything that I'm doing, you know, you know, maybe there's some guys doing, you know, uh, who's like, like uh, again, in advertising, right? Hey, I remember when, a gigabyte was like a lot of storage, whereas like back in the early 2000s, it, it was almost unlimited storage if you have a gigabyte. Now, shoot, right. a terabyte ain't even enough no more. So storage, so I have, like just say there's like a centralized storage area, and, and, and again, an example for me would be advertising because I have an advertising background. So I'm an advertising an advertising agency, and I have 10, 20 clients, and I'm storing all of their information in one place. And then I can kind of tap into that to make decisions across the board. Now, IBM doesn't want its information shared with Dell, even if it's in for kind of optimization processes. So storage is going to become like, again, it's another going to be issue. Where's my shit? Where's it going? Who else is that, you know, accessing it? And where before no one cared, no one knew to care, you know, kind of things like that. Uh, you know, the other challenge, you know, is, um, you know, is that, and, and again, across the board is the need to educate people and train people efficiently in these new technologies. Uh -huh. You know, you can't, you know, just people can't be walking up and saying, you know, hey, by the way, today, this is your job. Goodbye. You know, what do you mean? I don't know how to use this. You know, I don't know, like, you know, like where it's supposed to go. You know, again, I might want to add my own component to it and no idea, you know, so, and it gets, and everyone gets stuck. Everyone's frozen. Everyone, you know, it takes a long time, you know everyone's wasting all this money kind of putting on all these new systems and everyone's sitting around, you know, with their, you know, with their dick in their hand, you know, like, hey, how do I do this? How do I do that? I was saying earlier, you hit on a point when you talked about, uh, everybody look at the negative of, uh, industry 4.0 AI and technology, but there's a positive because, you know, although that truck driver, they know what he's doing. He can't be pulling over at Walmart. He's got loads sometimes, and just like everybody right this that on Amazon, you sit on your Amazon app and want to know where your package is. They won't know when this package is coming to your house if they don't know where the truck driver is with it. So right. it not only helps and, the man, it helps you out when you order something. Well, yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like in Industry 4, there is an actual personage component to this. Not only am I giving you information by you following my easy pass or another public information on automobiles, because automobile, uh, you know, both manufacturing and technology is very big on industry point four. It's an industry four. -0. It's very, kind of like th the main user of it right now. Next to just general manufacturing. Right. Hey, but I'm doing my job. Right. 
I'm the mm -hmm. driver and I'm doing everything. I'm, I'm meeting my numbers. I'm getting to where I'm here. I'm going home. And, like, and I'm getting the same money as the, you know, the guy who's sitting around sleeping behind me, you know, in the truck behind me. Right. And, and, and so the company recognizes that, recognize that, you know, they can say, Hey, here's someone who is worthy of an, uh, you know, of a raise. Here's someone worthy of a promotion. Right. So there, there's that other part. It kind of like might clean out some of like the, you know, the dead wood, but it sucks if you're the dead wood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, agree. That's, that's the only dark side of it. <laughs> so, the, yeah. So, the, and again, those are the challenges across the board. They're not old. I mean, they're not new by any far stretch to imagine. We all, you know, again, the other industries all kind of did this before. But it got us to like kind of like the greatness of kind of you know where we are now. I think um, you know healthcare is another place that's kind of using this when it comes to wearables. I'm a big wearable forecaster. Again, no kidding. Mm -hmm. You know we'll all be kind of you know we're kind of doing this now. Like your Fitbit and your Apple watches. You know that's your exactly. IoT connecting to an AOL. Not yeah. AOL. Oh my God. An AI. <laughs> Yo, chill. <laughs> He took it back with that. That's one. industry 1.0 there. <laughs> AOL. Yeah, there you go. Waiting for my uh, floppy disk in the mail so I can uh, join. You know, so yeah, kind of crazy. putting all these health metrics together, right? Uh, and then and then be able to make health recommendations, right? I mean, even an alert if there's something wrong with you, right? And so, uh -huh. you know, again, there's a lot of, you know, uh, the double-edged sword. But, but again, if you're, you know, noble in your direction you know in, in, kind yes. of your, in your personalities i mean this is gonna this is gonna work for you you know but if it's yeah. the old system sorry yeah. mate ain't happening well i'm just saying you know but in, in knowing this information it speaks to what you can do to better prepare for the future because everybody look at the jobs that was lost but you don't look at everything that was created and how life has become cheaper you know, I, we always talk about oil production, but we use less oil in, in this country. And I want to say, although there's a lot of accidents, there are less deadly accidents than there were previous years past because now we collect data on what speed limits should and should not be and the use of safety belts and everything. And uh, mm -hmm. right. with well, and then a lot of cars now are autonomous that helps the driver drive. So it, it it, it's a lot of warn, warnings and stuff that prevent a lot of would-be accidents. I know I was pulling yeah. out one day out of my driveway. I didn't see this car that was zooming behind me, and you know the camera beat the car beeps, and, and, and like where where is it? And I look, oh dang, it's a car there. So there's a lot of jobs and money being created as these industries change. And you, know, you, you just got process. Yeah, and it just saved your ass. Again, there's that yeah, personal that part, right? You're, you're, you're not going to the hospital now, right? You're not, no, you're, you are now an efficient member, you know, again, of your family. You can money. keep on working, you, know, you can keep on being there and all that kind of stuff. Like, you know, you know, is the emergency room a little pissed off that they don't have too many people? They'll be okay. They got their own yeah, stuff, you know. I'm of. sure. <laughs> but, you know, oh, they can't you help up in the they got right now. Thanks, though. <laughs> right. And again, if you're a doctor, you know, and you got nothing to do, you better go start researching some more doctor stuff. So, you know, we're all better, right? So like, we're not be wasting our time on, you know, broken legs and all the other kind of stuff. But I love the you know, the use of automobiles in this. And I, you know, I think we may have mentioned it in the past when it comes to, like, again, a multidisciplinary asking of it. But um, the, uh, you know, uh, you're familiar with the app Waze, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a school of thought that runs into industry four not only with the automatic driving you know, cars and stuff like that, but just in the efficiencies of that. If we left ways to make the decision and even drive if necessary, we would no longer have a carbon problem in, in, on our planet. Like you're saying, you want to solve car really? no carbon problem? You can, you know what? Just have your car, you know, connect to all these systems. You're not going to be waiting in traffic. You know, you're not going to, you'll get to your destination faster, safer, you know, every, you know, kind of everything else. And then, you know, and less, you're going to get less fuel, less time, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, predictive aspects of, you know, where different things, you know, kind of might be happening. So you want to, you know, you want to solve carbon, 
make your car drive you everywhere you want and then it'll, it'll, it'll be the you know easiest fastest way you know you don't have to be reinventing different things and stopping up you know kind of a solve in general one one technology boom but then, again now we're going back to that person you know that privacy thing mm-hmm. hey, maybe i want to drive you know maybe i want to go the long way or maybe uh, i don't know like, again i don't uh, again i'm working and somebody's watching me and uh, you know those, all those there's again a bunch but one system alone and so i've been actually a big component of it. now let me uh you know there's a little bit of an update since uh you know everything by the way i'm saying right now is obsolete by the time we're recording so uh that's how fast technology and everything moves yeah. so i have Pretty recently much. come across a study that said um in, in talking about this that it's generally known that if we did allow you know um you know a alternative uh transportation guidance system to solve all our problems but we're just not going to do it because it's you know because we're just human and there's other things that might be kind of getting in the way uh, they have they had run an ai system where they would put out dummy cars these automatic you know guided vehicles that would purposely slow mm-hmm. down certain like areas and certain traffic so in in reality you don't actually have to have everybody connected to the same system but you can do it with a really small amount of cars who will either drive at speed levels or kind of do different things like slow people yeah. down getting again now you kind of hate that but they you know efficiently uh-huh. you could you could solve a lot more of the the things that we were just talking about with a small right. amount of cars, doing a small amount of things, so it has changed the, the like, kind of like the, the point of view about about those traffic traffic flows and you know kind of different things that way. Dang, that's cool. How you, I like how you always bring everything together. But for the people watching though, um, if you've been taking notes, I hope y'all realize like this man that gave y'all like thirty different ideas for y'all to go start a business and use yeah. Your four <laughs> so. I hope you've been taking notes. Yeah, not only st- starting businesses, but also like you know d- directions that again, if you're going to lose a job, right? To yep. you know, to the system, have the system work for you. You know, at least you know, and, you know, yeah, again, exactly. uh, as a you know, as a as a futurist, be first, right? You don't have to know mm-hmm. you know everything, but just kind of get in there first, right? Yep. Uh, so if there's a you know a sector or something like that that is hot and we're all, I'm always talking about them and we're always kind of talking about them and where they're going to go, and if, if you're you know sitting around you're not sure which direction to go you know here they are you know if you have to do some retraining or any number mm-hmm. of things you know, that kind of going on, and uh, it just I could list right now the key technologies that are um, you know important to industry four, you know that could be also a kind of a big hint to or uh, an unfair advantage to your listeners and, and viewers uh, again what some of it might be uh, unfair advantages. You, yeah but if you're okay with this i can kind of rattle a few of them off yeah go ahead we love unfair yeah, advantages. Go ahead. yeah all right so obviously you have like again your internet of things systems right and again there's just a vast amount of them but the, the fact that you know they exist they will continue and you know uh uh, I'm a very big fan of sensors, right? So there's going to be, there's an actual kind of scientific name of it, but let's just call it a batrillion amount of sensors that are going to be, you know, implemented all over the place. From, you know, where you bought your bread, you know, to the piece of bread, you know, to the kind of packaging of the bread, to all of the sensors that are on, like, all of the buoys out in the ocean, kind of sitting there talking to satellites, telling you kind of what's going on and, you know, so that's kind of part of an in, like an internet of everything, but an internet of things. So there is, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, go look it up if you need to know, you know, what internet. But just you know, using internet of things. Then there's cloud computing. You know, again, artificial intelligence. You know, n- these are all again kind of common. You know, there are ways to kind of get in. But you know, v- what I think is untapped and will definitely be kind of coming more is 3D printing. I think 3D printing is such an untapped opportunity, you know, for everyone. And again, this is something that you could buy a machine, sit home and like make small car parts, you know, and get it easier to, you know, other to kind of distribution points. Or if you are a, uh, a mechanic and you need, you know, t- like maybe t- like 20% of the stuff that you can use to fix your car, you know, the cars that are coming in, you could print your loan on yourself 
without having to wait for the chain stores or running to you know or all the, those kind of things like again that's this very very kind of basic small thing but um you know the um there's an actual name for it in uh, uh in in industry four which is um additive manufacturing so that's kind of what it's called so you're kind of you know, oh, adding okay. things right so um there's some really cool additive manufacturing things uh, you know uh, and again a lot of it comes from like nature right so there's a drone that will build from the ceiling down something you know like uh again whatever you kind of need like kind of but a top down thing versus a just kind of sitting there spinning kind of thing it's kind of like they learned it from the bees when they put their uh you know how they make their uh, nests and stuff like that up in corners of buildings and things like that uh, again tons of opportunities you know kind of things like that uh you know just standard 5g technologies you know again they are not going away you know five you know 6g you know kind of around the corner but 5g technologies are like again the speed that allows us to kind of connect all these systems together and all that and again uh uh and it's still in its infancy if everyone thinks everything is 5g it is not there's still a lot of work that kind of has to be done you know kind of on that and so um you know um the augmented reality um you know i like to kind of, you know, kind of count that in there too uh, although i like to use the term immersive medias there's going to be a lot of immersive things that we'll be kind of using wearing again and, and working a uh, really good example of industry 4.0 with artificial with, uh, uh, augmented reality are like these kind of headgear glasses that people can kind of you know that are working you know you take it to work something is either broken because you know the system told you that it's broken or whatever and you can kind of now just kind of go there and watch basically a youtube video on how to fix this while you're there you know like again this would be a little bit more you know personalized to the companies and kind of things like that but and again it will be industry four that's going to recommend that you kind of get there a few days earlier because based on what it knows you know this piece is about to break it breaks every five days, you know, like, or it needs to be changed or lubed or whatever it is, like, kind of, like, and that kind of, like, again, that's a kind of deeper kind of connection to it. And the fact that, you know, you're the component to it, you know, you're going to be the fixer. The self-driving cars, you know, that's, again, the automated guided vehicles is what, you know, the, the recent term, you know, trucking, I personally think trucking can be completely changed with that. Um, and also, if you start electrifying them or using some of the other, you know, the other, you know, parts of it, if chain store management stuff that, you know, to be honest, nobody wants to be a trucker these days. The big, you know, the big, you know, not a lot of people want to do a lot of things these days, but trucking is one of them. And, uh, you know, it's long, it's boring, you know, you kind of get from one place, to the other, you know, but if you have it in, in a, an automatic system, it's going to, you know, it's going to kind of do it, you know the blockchain gets involved in here right so uh you know when you're starting especially when you start talking about you know funds electronic transfers of you know you know hey you know uh alexa you know buy that sweater and you know make sure i get it by thursday you know look, look at all the things that it has to do you know whatever but it's going to do it and it's going to get it there cheaper right but um you're not you know you're going to pay for it automatically out of your system, like out of whatever credit card or whatever, you know, you kind of have in there, you know, so that will expand out, you know, that'll be, hey, you know, uh, you know, look, you know, uh, automatic system, get this thing from Lord and, you know, give Ali 30 bucks, right? Just, you know, just the, the fact that I could do that with my voice, right? And then, you know, Lord's going to go and, you know, move his t-shirt and kind of send it to you and, you know, and all that. And so, Again, it's in there. A lot of it's kind of almost kind of seems, you know, obvious. Uh, you know, what usually kind of catches my eye, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'll spend a little bit more time on, you know, and duh, but is this uh, thing called Cobalt? You know, I know we kind of chatted about it a little bit before. And again, I'm really kind of hot on it and, and on because there's that kind of, you know, human aspect of it. Not because we thought about it because it demands it. You know, they didn't want to do that or whatever like that, but it's just the best way for us to work together. And COBOLT stands for collaborative robots, right? It's kind of like these, like, again, yeah. usually done in manufacturing, you know, like it kind of, it has no like scale issue, 
you can kind of again work all day you know kind of robots are kind of known for their like flexibility and kind of ease of program it's not that difficult to use these robots you know you probably almost kind of do it from your phone and they can work both for small businesses and large businesses right and so like a good example of that is like the various applications obviously when it comes to manufacturing and stuff like that but like food processing right so it's gonna there's this thing that has to be you know has seven thousand different components and the robot's going to come go and do that or it's going to wrap it or it's going to put you know the chicken and this and that in there but it's going to hand it off to a human to kind of take it to the next step right so uh, you know uh, again these color uh, co uh collaborative robot technologies i think are you know again untapped and kind of ready for you know more people to kind of to jump in um cyber security um we all hear it I, but i because uh you know of, of the different directions that i pay attention to there is a desperate desperate need for cyber security people you know um you know, not a difficult i won't say a, not a difficult class but you could learn it you know you know you apply your energies to where you need to apply your energies and you could quickly become a cybersecurity expert you know, like and the other thing about cybersecurity is that it doesn't stop you know it's not a dead language it's going to keep going you know it's just you know there's a lot of bad players and a lot of good players and they're all going to be you know using you know industry and, and ai and all different things to kind of go on it so it's good to kind of you know again get in now like on that part digital twins is another big part you may be kind of hearing that and i'm not going to go too much for sake of time but you know uh, a digital twin of both of a, of a human and, and of a building right so uh, or a system and so you can kind of you know it it is being fed all this information about how it's working and stuff like that so you can kind of go and say okay i want to see what the digital lord true is doing you know oh shit, he's not you know sweating he's having a heart attack you know whatever like that or you know here's this uh conveyor belt that i can kind of see right here there's a little you know a little beeping on my screen that means i have to take action on it that that part that assembly that building never goes down or you know will, will, you know in a minimum and continues to work it continues to function they kind of you know there's that additional you know and, and if you do that right prices and things like that should start kind of coming down but you know again we are talking I'm also a very big fan of drones and drones are a very big part of industry 4.0. Drone is an unbelievable untapped dying desperate for people to, you know, to, you know, to, you know, to in a half a dozen different sectors, including the army and, you know, and, and police and things like that. Um, underwater drones are very popular now, you know, um, anyone who can play a first player, you know, uh, video game. You know, if you've been trained, you might be training. You may have been in training all this time because it's basically the same components. It's the same handheld stuff, you know, like whatever like that. So if you can fly, you know, or fight or do something in a video game, you are already a half a step ahead, you know, of the person who, you know, is not, has no idea. Also, the yourself, your flying cars will fall into those same directions too. You know, that's still a couple of months out, you know, whatever. And machine vision is another thing it is uh, and again i'm not going to get into it because it's going to take too long but the next component to the evolution of all of it is, is you know is the machine having to be the ability to see and that goes into your automatic cars that goes into again a lot of the manufacturings and kind of things like that it, it, it could point out you know things so and that's also a very nascent nascent technology wow i mean you you dropped a lot of gems and, and Shu, if you can, put up the picture of how this all plays yep. together. Screenshot this because this is the future that you're going to be looking at. This is this right. is everything that Rich just spoke about. And, the, you know, the, the important part about this is that, you know, you, you are seeing it again from automotive, you know, automotive cars to cloud computing plus. They are they by themselves something. But Industry 4, as I, you know, as we kind of mentioned this in the beginning, is really the integration of all of those things together right so you know you can become an expert in this or whatever like that but it's that fusion of putting all those five you know those half dozen things together that is that makes industry four industry four you know and it's you know again it's gonna ai could figure out that you know if you add two more somethings to this product it becomes stronger 
you know, or, you know, or, or easier to use or, you know, kind of easier to, or easier to process with something else. Smart materials are kind of coming up as another, you know, kind of another thing there. It's not stopped. It's just going to keep going, you know, and uh, again, it's going to need us to, you know, to, to help it. It's you know, AI is not smart by any far stretch of the imagination. It doesn't have that spot that we have. Nope. And so we you know, give it that's the why data. it's Yeah. I mean, it's going to get smarter. It's going to kind of do things like that. But, you know, originality, you know, creativity, you know, th this is kind of, you know, kind of who we are. Right. And then, and, 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 and again, and they're just tools. They're just that. You know, don't, you know, you know, you know times to, you know, and, and, and I think that's amazing to be, to be honest, as a person, you know, again, as someone who kind of watches a lot of different things, uh, you know, kind of, when you start kind of putting those things together, it's almost godlike. If you really kind of think about it, you know, going on, mm -hmm. and, you know, and you know, are we gods? Oh my God, my voice has just turned into a god voice. <laughs> I I just yeah. Did I just evolve <laughs> into God? <laughs> no, no, I'm live, live right here on. on the episode. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but I mean, for real though, it is. It's, it's very godlike. I think that's why a lot of people are scared of it. But for me, I, I'm I'm lit off of this conversation. I mean. Every time we do these episodes, uh, it's, I learn, you know, even in, even though I do my research, but there's there's always something that clicks. You know, I'm always looking for the pattern. I learned a lot. I was learning a lot as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, these are these are so anybody watching. You probably gonna have to meditate after this. That's what Rich told us when we first started talking to each other. Yeah, I, You're going to get excited. I, so you yeah. bring it down. <laughs> Just meditate. Right. Take some time. Clear it right, up. Yeah. It is a very Have big part of my, you know, uh, well, it's a very big part of my consulting. Know. Again, it's part of my training as well. I mean, it, it, and you know, anyone who's been training futurism, anyone kind of doing that, the key, key component is to ground yourself, right? Because again, these things are really exciting, you know, and especially when you start watching them, you know, like I was showing uh, recently some people about what a 12D movie is. What's a 12D movie? Sorry? So I'm uh, I'm trying to come up with like so. Let's just say you're in a a room, big, small, kind of whatever you want to you know kind of call it, and then action is kind of going on everywhere from the floor, you know, like that. But it's taking into consideration where your perspective of where you are in the room, and adjusts, right? And so you could be then like if again I, I have examples. I don't know. Would it be like Disney it World? Now, Have you ever been like Disney World? If you ever like yeah, some of these yeah, animated it, rides at Disney World where that's crazy. you the, the chair move and as you yeah. think you're moving and like the one right, you actually think you've fallen, but you're not. You still yeah, you're with screen. Yeah. You're in the it same is, spot, but the screen is tricking your mind. Yeah. Yo, right. That is but at, at its core, that's what it is. And but what a lot of people are missing, and I think Disney and a few other guys, ooh, sorry, are kind of getting this. And again, and as you know, I'm kind of a big sound guy, right? So the sound system, right, is incredible in these 12D movies, right? Like, uh, and again, we all kind of see that. You can kind of hear, like, you know, almost in stereo, right? When there's somebody who's walking from your right speaker and you can hear the steps and it kind of works into your left speaker, right? And you kind of get yeah. the sense that you're in that kind of, like, there's <laughs> someone going on, right? So hold That'd on, let me tell you one thing. And this, and this could be anywhere, right? But with the, especially like again, when I talk about like the uh, you know the future of immersive technologies and kind of things like that, mm -hmm. there are some really simple things that could really kind of put you in a place in a different place. And one of them is the vibration, right? We we all when we're out there in real world, you know, shit vibrates, mm -hmm. right? Getting on a bus, you know, whatever you kind of you know moving. You can interact. Can you know, get that to interact kind of where you're, wherever you're standing now and have just some basic, simple vibrations, you know, uh, that would make the, the, that dimension, that extra added dimension. So if you're watching a movie and like the person is, you know, or whatever the you know, storyline is that their phone rings or it's on vibrate and you feel the vibrate, that you're there, like you, you, you know, like whatever. So yeah. it's a lot of these things. So you kind of add a whole bunch of these, again, sound, lighting, you know, AI, um, you know, AI components that uh, allow for perspective change for two or more people in one room, right? So when you go into these 12D movies and you're with someone, they, you all get it. 
you know, that person's kind of seeing something, you know, differently or kind of whatever like that and kind of adds you into it. So, so powerful. So cool. I'll send you like a snippet, you know, after this, but uh, yeah, please, you'll get a sense because when, when, when you actually get to see the people like who are like kind of sitting there, either sitting on the floor or standing around or something like that, you know, you, it kind of brings you down to earth like a little bit, but what's going on around them is incredible. That is awesome. I, can you imagine watching a football game and you got like gargles on and 3D and the sound and that'll be so when the quarterback cool, get, and you sitting in the quarterback spot looking at the field and when he gets sacked you get you feel that vibration when you get hit as well. Yeah. Well, you still like that'd well, be so like, you, yeah. Well, you just actually kind of plugged you know my uh, upcoming podcast, which was the uh, future of linear television, right? So the things that we, you guys just mentioned are all part of and currently have existing technologies of to be able to do that. So in Asia, you know, again, I watch, um, you know, signals from all over the place, right? So, uh, you know, uh, you know, Afrofuturism is one of them, right? Pan-Asian futurism is another one, you know, the Koreans, the Japanese, and kind of everyone kind of working on. So you, there's technologies currently going on right now that you could go to a sports game and think you're in the stadium, right, you know, based on exactly what you said, like that surround sound, surround screen, you know, highly, uh, you know, again, uh, kind of, you know, uh, you know uh, crowd inducing, right? There's like, what makes going to a theater, going to a concert, kind of going then different than you sitting down at home? Because it's like big, that gives me loud, right there for a sports you know, like kind of going on, right? Sport. Yeah. You're right there. And then, you know, most you of these technologies are all are all IP based, right? So the same technologies that are currently supporting what you do on the internet and in, in your games right now are being applied at these macro levels. So it's not like it's hard, you know, if you, you know, again, it's just the vision, you know, it's like you got to know what you have and you know what kind of what you do with it. And then how do, how do, how does this technology work for a human? You know, it's not yeah, being, you know, you can do other shit, right? Right? Yep. So it'll be hard for you to tell a difference at some points if you're at a game or, or not. And the other part that I like is that, in, like, like you said, like you can change your point of view, right? Not in the, not in like the, say, the stadium point, but in some of the other like immersive technologies going on that there is no reason that stops you from watching a football game from the perspective of the quarterback. So you could watch the game from the 50 yard line. You could watch the game from the quarterback's perspective from the, uh, how about, you know, becoming a wide receiver for the first time and watching the wide receiver, what he has to see and do, right? You could kind of watch it from the roof of the building. You can be the little robot guy who's spinning around, you know, you know, like that R2D2 thing that's kind of going on. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, BB9 or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Now, that technology is now, right? And again, it's exciting. It's doing all these kind of things. But, you know, again, I, you know, I need, you know, Lord's point of view about what we should be doing that, right? I don't know what, you know, what kind of thing like that, right? And so, um, you know, I'll, uh, uh, you know, I'll let you guys know when that's somewhat finished. You know, I had some TV people that I had, you know, known to, you know, kind of, I did an interview with and kind of where they're going and, you uh, it's it's fun stuff it's gonna be really really kind of fun stuff yeah i'm wow, looking forward to that <laughs> there's, there's been some real gems and jewels oh, yeah. that, that that you dropped to the audience you all appreciate the content and like to continue to receive content like this wherever you're watching to us if it's on the radio wdjy 99.1 you know send us some comments email us uh don't forget the discord you can join us in our discord where you can interact if you're watching this on youtube you can see the discord scan the discord club, <laughs> uh, in front of lord shoe and if you're on spotify you know leave us some comments like subscribe share with a friend you know we enjoy yeah. bringing this content to you this is how we continue to bring you this good high quality content and bring guests on like rich that can get you ready for the future of AI, whatever that may be, in futurism. So yeah, like, subscribe, transformative leave us power, transformative, transformative power. power. That's what yes, transformative power. Leave them comments because Rich actually want he want to read them. 